Hey, Phantom Maniacs, welcome to the newest unboxing here on the Needless Things YouTube channel. Today, we are taking a look at the newest wave of Masters of the WWE Universe figures that I just can't seem to stop buying, uh, even though I don't really have anywhere to put them and I hadn't planned to collect them. But every time I see them, uh, or every time I get a text saying, hey, do you need these? Because these were provided by the incredible Mrs. Troublemaker. Uh, <laughs> I can't help it, you guys. I just got to get them because they just, I don't know what it is. I, I, I thought it was a mashup that I just wasn't that interested. It makes sense. I think it's a great concept. But for me personally, it's just not something I felt like I needed. But every time I'm so delighted by what I see that I have to get them. And plus they're the fact that they're completely interchangeable with the Masters of the Universe Origins figures, which you should go back and watch our review of that entire line thus far uh, here on the Needless Things YouTube channel, or you can find the audio version wherever you get your podcasts. Uh, but anyway, so I got the picture. Do you need these? I looked at it, and I was like, yeah, I need them. So let's take a look at this new wave with two characters that, honestly, I, I'm not even that invested in. But my gosh, they just look so fun. Uh, we're going to start with Stephanie McMahon, the evil billion-dollar skull queen. Now, this is one that I actually wanted because, one, I just really like the look of this figure. Uh, if you're putting together a Masters of the Universe Origins diorama, she fits in it. Like, there's nothing about her that stands out as not working with Masters of the Universe. And I'm a huge fan of heel Stephanie McMahon. When she's on, she's on. She's one of the best heels in the business. Uh, I mostly enjoy her work. And seeing her as this evil figure just works for me. I like it. Uh, we've got this great art on the back with her wearing Triple H's skull crown and face mask. Uh, just cool. She used to be Daddy's little girl, but now the billion-dollar princess has tapped into the chaotic magic within dark depths of WWE Turnia to become its evil queen. So, <laughs> what's weird about that is do they use dollars in WWE Turnia? I guess they do. Which maybe we'll get some kind of million. What would the million-dollar man be? In Masters of the Universe, Who? What? what character would you mix him up with? I don't even know. Would he be like Hordak? Or would he be... Like, would they do the faceless one? or so? I don't know. I don't know who that would be. Uh, we've got the mini comic that kind of gives the details of what's going on here. We've got Triple H and Steph on the front. We've got a little story inside. These are always so much fun. I love the creativity they use to, to get these WWE characters into the world of Eternia. Let's take this out here. What? A, how interesting is that? There's like a little pull tab there. I'm sure that's not necessarily what that's intended as, but it does make it a little easier to get out. Uh, so let's get the billion dollar princess out of there. She has got her little bag of accessories. Uh, I am over trying to fiddle around with the tape on these bags. It's very annoying because it's like the stickiest tape in the world. So we're just going to scissor those things right open. Get everything out there. Now, if you haven't watched one of our mini Masters of the Universe, whether it be WWE or Origins, uh, these figures are interchangeable with each other. When I said interchangeable, I meant that in the most literal way that they literally pop apart and you can combine parts of one figure with parts of another figure. Her head doesn't quite want to pop off, but believe me, everything comes apart and can be combined together. So that's another good reason to keep buying these WWE figures is you can, like, if you want to put Evil Lynn, if you want to give Evil Lynn these pants or something, you're like, you can totally do that. All right, so we've got... Stephanie head with the evil Lynn headpiece and oh that fits on more yeah, excuse me more nicely than I thought it would got the triple h face mask there and then of course as has been the rule oh wait a minute 
This is different from Evil Lens Scepter. This one actually is made of bone and is a more... Uh, I don't have an Evil Lens handy right now. A uh, more detailed piece. That's pretty cool. I like that. So you've got something completely different there. An all new, well, two all new accessories in the skull mask and the bone scepter. Pretty cool. I like the detail of her fingerless gloves here. Uh, and again, these are just the evil Lynn arms, the evil Lynn waist. But we do have, well, on the legs, this is all just paint. These are the standard legs. Uh, I've got the boots that all the females in this line share. Uh, and then a, I believe this is a new uh, sculpted torso. I don't think this has been used before. I'm trying to decide. Let's see. Oh, you know what? I just happen to have Becky Lynch back here. And yeah, that's a, well, okay, let's pop this off. I think this is throwing off my perception a little bit. Yeah, that's the same torso piece, which is fine because that was a big part of the original Masters of the Universe line was the uh, clever use of sheer... Oh, I didn't even realize this. So they're actually little peg holes right there uh, that that mask plugs into that keep it in place. I thought it was just kind of clipping around her face, but it actually does fasten in there. This is great. This is a great look. I really like it. Awesome figure. Uh, if you're a Steph fan, a must-have. Next up, one of the ones that I didn't think I would want. I'm honestly still not sure I want, but Goldberg, the heroic human jackhammer. And I, what's funny to me is more often than not, I find these on the pegs with like, they've clearly just uh, like done this number. Like they don't, that's how much they even care about anything. It like... And that's good. I would not make a good Walmart employee, but I would I would have to go through and like pop every single one of these out because I couldn't leave them pegged like that, which is ridiculous. Uh, but anyway, Goldberg, big heavy figure, looks great. Like Goldberg as Ram Man is silly and fun, and I'm glad they didn't use an actual Ram Man buck for him. Uh, many superstars of WWE Tardia have tried to take down the hero they call Goldberg. But all have fallen. There's only one question for future challengers. Who's next? Uh, you've got the cross cell on the back. Just, I, I love the... That's another thing is this line has sort of a false nostalgia to it because obviously no such WWE line ever existed. Oh, and we have right here Goldberg versus the Warrior. So, again, cross cell in effect. Because when you're a kid, you see, oh, well, I need this figure, too. You look at the back of the card, you go, oh, I need all these other figures, too. Like, that's smart marketing. And I don't understand how Hasbro has gotten away from that so badly. All right, let's get old Goldberg. Using our, our handy pull tabs. Let's get Goldberg out of there. Uh, I'm just going to cut right through the rubber bands. Pop him on out. Uh, like I said, he's a big... Big, sweaty, beefy man. To see him slapping meat with the warrior. If you're not a fan of Big E, then I pity you. That's what that reference is. Big, sweaty men slapping meat. Greatest hashtag ever. All right. Uh, and again, we have sort of a new accessory here. Because this is pretty much Ram Man's helmet. Uh, it is completely different from the Origins Ram Man figure, which you can see a review of here on the Needless Things YouTube channel. Uh, totally different shape, but it is unmistakably Ram Man's helmet. It's just not the one they used for Origins. Fits right on Goldberg's head there. Mm, kinda. Uh, one that, something I'll mention real quick, and one that I didn't review was the Ricky the Dragons. Well, actually, you know what? Here's a little bonus for you right now. So... Here is the Ricky the Dragon steamboat figure with Merman's armor. And he's got, I mean, to look dragon-like. And he's got the scaling on his tights and everything. Looks awesome. I love this figure. I love the look of it in the green and the red. Looks awesome. He pops on the shelf. 
And because of the whole dragon thing, they included uh, Dragon Blaster Skeletor's accessory in a translucent orange, which looks beautiful. Uh, and also shows me that we'll probably be getting a Dragon Blaster Skeletor uh, in the Origins line. Because they've done that a lot, where we'll see things in the WWE line first. Uh, and, and I guess that's a budget thing, because WWE is a brand that is just poised to sell more readily than Masters of the Universe. But there is no way to connect that dragon onto this steamboat. Like, you can kind of fake it out, but he doesn't have the Dragon Blaster Skeletor armor that would have the peg to go right here to hold him on. So there's no there's no connection here. This dragon cannot sit on his shoulder. It can't it can't do anything. Like you can kind of get it to grab that little horn right there, but it doesn't sit right. What what like I love this figure. I love this dragon, but get him to interact, Mattel. Come on. But I get it. I understand what happened here. It's just kind of lame. All right. Sorry, a little sidetrack. I'm sorry, Goldberg. I did not mean to steal your spotlight. I know you don't like it when that happens. Uh, all right, so the helmet goes on and sort of fits. Okay, there we go. You have to push the armor forward a little bit to get the helmet to fit on the way that it's supposed to. Uh, but then once you do, it kind of just stays that way. It's nice. It looks good. Uh, he's got his... I wish they had done Goldberg in just the trunks. I... I don't know why they do modern Goldberg all the time. Well, I don't know. Maybe I do. Because if kids are buying this, they want Goldberg in the shorts because that's how they know him. Uh, but I just like Trunks Goldberg more. Looks great. Got his uh, emblem on the back. Got his tattoo going on. He's got his elbow pads. that are separate little pieces that you can remove if you want to. Uh, knee pads. Everything looks great. And then he's got Ram Man's axe. Slides right into that hand right there. And look at that. A vicious Goldberg ready for battle. All right, let's move along to Ultimate Warrior, the heroic champion of WWE Ternia. I've overlooked the highly articulated for power posing burst that's on all of these. I love it. Uh, I don't know what Warrior's deal is here because we've already gotten an, one other Warrior figure but here's the reason why I had to have this one. Load the spaceship with the rocket fuel. All the fuses and the exit signs have been burnt out. There is no place to run. The power of the ultimate warrior will always prevail. So this is a nod to one of his most famous promos. And it does look like some sort of like space rocket ship ultimate warrior. I don't know that there's even... Uh, well, let's let's open it up while I talk. Uh, I don't know that there's even a Masters of Universe correlation here. Like, obviously, if he's attorney as champion, he's supposed to be like He-Man. But he's he's so different, and I think that's part of what made me... Uh, we're glued in at the bottom here. Uh, oh, okay. So he's maybe like King Grayskull. Because you can see him with the pre turnia stuff. With Jake the Snake Man and the Fiend. Gosh, I would love to have toys of the dinosaurs. Uh, okay. So, yeah, he's kind of like King Grayskull. It works. And I, I liked that, that he was... He, he's something a little, a little deeper cut, a little different. Uh, a little more... He stands out a little bit more than some of the other ones that are kind of straight up, you know, like the, the big, big moss man thing that everybody thinks seems to think is such a good idea. I like it when it's a little more outside the box than that. And he's got a very different look. The white and the silver and the red, uh, stand out and are unique for this guy. Like what Zodak is probably the closest to having these kinds of colors, but this is this is a different color scheme for Masters of the Universe. I love the fringe on the boots. That looks great. Uh, all the deco on this guy, the W on his uh, chest piece here and on his knee pads. They put a lot of effort into this one. He looks really, really good. Uh, he's got two fists, which is perfect for being Ultimate Warrior. He looks really great. I like him. Let's get this cape on him. 
because this is another kind of unique piece here. This cape is something really different and kind of weird. I don't know how well the head is going to go on on top of this cape. Okay, it works. It works. We, we made it happen. Kind of. <laughs> I don't know that that's the best fit in the world, but I like it because it's kind of flying out behind him. Because, look, the, the Ultimate Warrior was nothing if not kinetic, so no cape is just going to be hanging off of his shoulders. It's going to be full of action. I just like the look of this guy. He's, he's different. Uh, I dig it. And then finally, through hellfire and brimstone, the demonic red machine, it's Kane. All right. Uh, you can check out my interview live at Dragon Con with Kane uh, on the Needless Things podcast, available wherever you get your podcasts. Uh, it is still up, and it's a great interview. We're talking about the horror of Kane uh, and how horror concepts got worked into the character of Kane. Another great comic book there. Uh, he's he's one of my favorites. I love a guy who takes just the worst ideas in the world and does the best he can with them, which I think Glenn Jacobs did throughout his career. Uh, now, don't get me wrong. He was starting from an incredible gimmick uh, and a great character. But over the course of his career, he did have to deal with some concepts and, and ideas and stories that maybe weren't the best in the world. Katie Vick. Uh, but anyway, what we have here is a fantastic looking figure, possibly my favorite in the line so far, as opposed to the tape they use on these bags, which is not my favorite of anything. Oh my gosh, are you kidding me with this? What the heck? What is happening? Mattel, let's take it easy with the taped up little bags. It's it's unnecessary. All right. So anyway, we have the big red machine cane. Now they have literally worked the machine portion in because what they've done here is kind of made him like Roboto. Uh, he's got the Roboto arms and the Roboto slash trap jaw legs. And he has the interchangeable hand. I kind of wish he had a regular hand to go over here as well. But it's okay. It's fine. Because he's got this blaster. I don't know which way it goes. I think I prefer this way. That looks right to me. Let me know in the comments what you think. He's got his little claw hand here. And then... Oh, okay. This goes... We've got this cool fire effect that plugs onto the blaster. That is incredible. And then also on top of that, Kane's hair is translucent plastic uh, with brown paint on top to give him this really cool look of being sort of a fiery machine guy. But we've got all the painted detail of Kane's costume. Looks awesome. Uh, he's got This one has studs painted on the belt, which is more than you can say about some of his elite figures. Just looks great. Looks fantastic. Uh, a must-have for this collection, or if you're a fan of Kane, I just love the fact that they leaned into the machine concept of, of Kane being the big red machine. Uh, just awesome. You guys, these figures are fun. Like I said, I just, I can't resist them when I see them in the store or when I get that message saying, Hey, do you need these? Uh, guess what? You know what? I do need them. They're, they're fun. They're ridiculous. And a lot of love has gone into this brand uh, that's that's for my little preview pick, my header pick, or whatever you want to call it. Uh, but just so much love has gone into this brand. The people working on it obviously love Masters. They obviously love WWE. Uh, and they're just doing a fantastic job. They're fun figures, if you can find them. Thanks for watching, you guys. Please like, subscribe, share, tell your friends about needless things. And remember, Distrocity! Smash that like button if you like needless things.